This is the You, Me, and BTC podcast. Cryptocurrency decrypted. Welcome to episode 64. Evolution is one of the many Bitcoin dark markets that sprang up after the Silk Road was shut down. Unfortunately, the platform vanished just days ago. Many suspect that the market's administrators decided to run off with their users' funds, but no one is certain. The following recording took place just hours after the collapse was discovered. We'll chat about what might have happened at Evolution and how its users will be affected. Then later in the show, we'll discuss a mysterious Bitcoin company called 21 Inc. The startup has managed to raise more money than any other digital currency company to date. The long list of big name investors includes Andreessen Horowitz, Qualcomm, PayPal co-founders, the CEO of Dropbox, and many more. Today, we'll chat about what all this investment means for Bitcoin and what 21 Inc. might have planned. Your hosts are Tim Baker, John Stewart, and myself, Daniel Brown. Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 64 of the You, Me, and BTC podcast. We are glad to have you. This is... Uh, I guess we just started Wednesday, March 18th, and uh, you'll hear this tomorrow, even though it's 12, 11 a.m. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks for joining us. I am Daniel Brown, and I'm here with... Tim Baker. And John Stewart. That was super enthusiastic, Tim. That <laughs> Tim Baker. <laughs> was that really I that couldn't quiet? have sounded that much better. <laughs> Tim Baker, here again. For oh, all man. your listening pleasure. <laughs> I, I know I promised that I would give Tim the first chair because he was so good at it, but I'm a selfish bastard, so I'm keeping it. I, I, apparently <laughs> Daniel's having an issue with this, but we'll get through it during this podcast, I guess. It, it's tough because I keep struggling between my selfishness, like I want to be the most important guy, and my laziness, just because I don't want to do the hard stuff, so... Since when and, and, do you want to be the most important guy? You mean in this or in life? In anything. Oh, in the show. I mean, you do do it in the show. You're an asshole in the show. Well, but... well I was I was actually going to draw a metaphor between both. Stop. Like... No, no more metaphors. <laughs> right, right, right. I don't know, he's, <laughs> he's always like, well, I'm going to use this metaphor, and then he starts comparing democracy and... <laughs> oh, my god, And Subway... And Lay's <laughs> potato chips because they're all things that people. I've enjoy. never talked about Lay's potato chips or Subway, but yeah, I, know I was going to say, have you? <laughs> did I miss that? No. It was <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually we did do a show really early on about Subway starting to accept Bitcoin. That was episode That's true. like five or six. Did we do it like a long thing about Subway? I really hope we didn't. Probably not the whole show. Probably like half of it. Was Subway. It's just, oh, I like Subway. It's good. So <laughs> I've only been to Subway like three times. I bet we did it. I bet we did. It probably wouldn't be our worst discussion. Oh, that'd be fun. Talking, trying to figure out what our worst discussion has been. But we, that we'll save that for another day. Hopefully not. Anyway, so I guess we'll jump into things. Tim has a pretty interesting story that he found uh, about uh i guess it's supposedly one of the most popular dark markets after the silk road went down and stuff it's the uh, second called... biggest it's currently the second biggest or it's second yeah to the it's silk right road. after Ag or um i believe it's right it's second to agora okay or agora well apparently the second place one evolution uh i don't know they're having some trouble it could possibly be a scam. Uh, nobody really knows. Just some weird things are happening, really just within the past few hours, maybe the past few days, too. So uh, you want to share what's going on, Tim? Well, it's, it's not in the past few days because a lot of these people are coming here and they are trying to figure out why they can't 
Oh, I guess I should explain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at a Reddit post. I, is that what the term is for Reddit? Just a post? Yeah, a post or a thread. Thre- I think they both okay. work. Well, I mean, I was more asking out of curiosity. I don't really care that much, but <laughs> uh, it's a complaint from a... Oh, this one says an Evolution staff member, but he, he says that um, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I've been suspicious the past few days with withdrawals not working and admins. Wait, he's been suspicious when? Past few days with... with oh, okay, okay. <laughs> damn, this is an Evolution staff member. <laughs> Shut up. I know, I know. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like that you're right. You are right. But <laughs> the withdrawals not working and admins usually are more forthcoming and explain to me why they're slow, but they weren't this time, just kept giving me time frames. I have admin access to see parts of the back end. The admins are preparing to exit scan with all the funds. Not a single withdrawal has gone through in almost a week. Automatic withdrawals have been disabled, which is only doing on rare occasions. I'm sorry, but Verto and Kimball fucked us all. I have over 20,000 in escrow myself from sales. I can't fucking believe it. Absolute scum. I'm giving this warning to you all as soon as I possibly could have. Confronted Kimball and Verto about it, they confirmed it, and they're doing it right now. Servers have gone down, including backup server for staff. I'm sorry for everyone's losses. I'm gutted and speechless. I feel so betrayed. So, this also could be part of the scam. This could be a guy who's actually part of it, and then, but who knows. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, they, uh, they, uh, if, if, if you're on evolution, your money's gone. And, I mean, the first thing you think about is, okay, a lot of people lost money who were buying, but then also, I mean, the first thing I thought about, maybe everyone else goes to the logical of, oh, maybe the people who sell stuff have more money in there, but, because right. some of these people, I was reading the, all the, the replies, and a lot of, they're saying, okay, I can't get on here, but a lot of people are saying, okay, give me a picture, because I, like, if, if this is real, I'm, I'm done. Like, I don't have money <laughs> to pay people back anymore. Like, oh, I'm yeah, literally yeah. not sure if people are going to kill me or other people. Like, I like I don't have money, like, any. Like, right. I had it all in there. That's the thing. It's it's rough when it comes to drugs because, I mean, if if, <laughs> if you lose a bunch of money gambling and you can't pay back your car loan or whatever, that's just a legal thing in whatever bankruptcy whatever happens but if you're trying to pay for drugs and you can't that's that could be life-threatening oh yeah i mean and i'm trying to find the exact reply but this guy was talking about he was a vendor he had been on he's been on four sites he's been on the first silk road he then was on sheep and he was on uh i think two others that have all gone down and they they, and Besides Silk Road 1, I'm pretty sure the rest of them have all turned out to be... They've either been scams or they've been hacked. Because, like, Silk Road 2 was hacked. They, I, I don't think they were ever a scam because they got taken down by the government. Or at least they never showed to be a scam, necessarily. It's just they got hacked one time, unless that was the inside scam. Right. Wasn't there one that they at least claimed to have shut down, or to have been hacked or something, and they promised that they would like work with. Yeah, that was pay. Silk Road two. No, okay, that was Silk 2. Road 2. 2.0. So wait, so that so all this happened. They they got hacked and they were starting to pay people back, and then the government took them over. Yeah, Is that I mean, what happened? It, yeah, it wasn't like right away. I don't. Right, but but both of those things did happen. Yeah. Okay. I mean, as far as I remember. Or or, or maybe. No, th- uh, this probably isn't likely because there's probably like actual people who are arrested and stuff. But one idea would be to steal all the money and just put up a splash screen like this site has been seized by the FBI, and you get to keep the money. <laughs> y- yeah, except people come looking for you. <laughs> I th- well, because it seems like like there's more than ju- it's kind of hard to keep this secret because there's like a lot of people and there have to be sp- oh, right. more than right just like a few people involved it's not like I mean I don't know but and yeah and it's uh, yeah you're you're right you know to have so many people involved and what I mean you're right that it's it's risky to have so many people involved in something like this I mean, it's risky but it's kind of necessary <laughs> 
Oh no, to, no, I agree. Yeah, like and I, another another necessary evil is just the whole idea of you know transporting physical things. You're you're just going to have to deal with addresses. And yeah, but that's not the problem right now. Are you talking about? Hasn't I mean I I know it's not right now, but hasn't it been? A problem in the past it's, where the police just follow addresses and stuff like that. It wouldn't be a like problem that. if people weren't retarded and just used encryption. <laughs> okay. Well, no, I, I didn't Damn really mean it. encryption. I meant like actual packages. They can detect the drugs and and follow the, them and like arrest them as soon as they pick up the package or something. I, I no, thought I've heard you, stuff no, like that. No, you can just... They can't arrest you for having something sent to your house. You have to can't, like, if they follow it, and for some reason, like, if you're buying huge quantities of drugs and just shipping them to your house, they might decide that, well, maybe he's selling them, so we can go in and get those, <laughs> and then we get a lot of money, and we go, oh, we broke up a drug dealer. And <laughs> so then they hit your house after you have a, because you can just say, I mean, I didn't, people just send me this, like, I didn't order this. Right. Just yeah, yeah, I, I could door. see that excuse. I, I no, still like, thought I've heard. No, that's not excuse. Like, there's, like, nothing they can do about it. Cause that's, no, I, I it's know. Just, like, I know. It's the government sending you shit from other people with the post office. Because it all goes to the post office. They don't, I wish I've never quite understood why they don't use UPS. But it might be that they scan their shit a little bit better. <laughs> but, because it seems like there wasn't that much, like... The, the forums are not flooded with people complaining about having their stuff taken all the time. It doesn't really seem like the uh, post office doing too great of a job. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I, know, I, th I never thought of that, but Bunch you're of right. lazy government workers. Why are they well, it, here's the thing. I, I was going to say that I heard a s story about somebody, the cops just following a package and arresting somebody as soon as they accepted it. And... Maybe maybe I'm wrong because you're. I think you're right. They can't really do much if somebody else sent them a package. Well, if you open it and you're like, oh, and then yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you if you put it in your pocket and or or roll it up and smoke it, then maybe. But but anyway, whether that's true or not, e even if it is true, I mean that's only one story. You're right. It's not like everybody who orders something gets chased down by the cops. I don't think that's super common. Probably well, it's not because worth the money. It's not worth yeah, that's the, the thing, recipients. Because you hear, like, I remember, like, there's some kids up at college who were buying off of a site like that, but they were just buying tons and tons of ecstasy pills because they were selling them. And then the cops just fuck because it's big enough that they can, right. they, they can justify the money because you're going to get that much whenever you bust them. They're not going to bust people for buying an ounce of weed or, like, a few pills because it's not. No one cares. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, well, I mean, it's not that they don't care. It's not going to make... too small. It's not yeah. going to... No, it's not going to make anyone's promotion. You can't... Like, like I was part of this drug ring where we <laughs> yeah, took that's, that's $80 a good worth point. of drugs from people. <laughs> and we only killed two of them. And all of the dogs. <laughs> but now I'm generalizing. No, yeah, this is pretty crazy, though. It's It's only been posted here for four hours and there's already 450 comments well someone also so. made the point that a lot of the european vendors are asleep and it's saint patty's day so, so they're going to be hung over <laughs> and waking up to that so yeah so did they suggest that, that that was like intentional they tried to shut it down whenever people were preoccupied no because or, or is that just a coincidence they've already been from what the guy said before, it sounds like they've already been having just, like, glitches, but that's kind of always like that, because you can always just pass that off as a, an attack or something is wrong with the market. Just be like, it's not responding right now. Like, oh, sorry, withdrawals are a little bit slow because we're trying to deal with this new hack. They don't need to be like, oh, people are all drunk, because people aren't constantly on their computers just staring. Because, like, the mass majority of the people are going to catch, like, a withdrawal not going... I'm I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit lost. So you're saying they don't have to really hide it that much because people just wouldn't really notice anyway that quickly? Well, because it's, that's, like, most of these sites in the forums are always complaining about how, like, the, there's always attacks. Like, even the, the radio thing we used to do just would always have problems. 
And if that happens enough and you start to get used to it, you kind of expect it whenever you're on that, then you're not like every, if it happens, you don't automatically go, oh, okay, okay. oh no, what's going on? I need to try to right now right. get my money out. So you're, just like, so oh, you're saying whether it was intentional or not, they've been having withdrawal issues for a while. So no, I have no idea what that's, what's been happening. Yeah, I'm but going that's what off, they claimed, I'm, right? I'm he go, said, no, he and, said for a f- he said for a few days, Daniel. It's not like right. a few. It's not like it's been going on for weeks, right? I but think what he saying, was saying was more that they didn't intentionally try to do it at this time because it doesn't really matter that. Yeah, much. I didn't really get why you thought about the because like if it, people are still doing business, everyone's not going to be like all day today drinking. Like maybe they drink tonight, but. Like, no one's going to, like, take off all day and just be drunk the entire day. No. They could be selling stuff. I, I, Yeah. I'm still confused what the original point was. Are you just saying... No, are, I just, are you just I saying, read a comment. Comment from Reddit about St. Patrick's Day, and then you said something about St. Patrick's Day. Well, right. If I, they I, used right. that intentionally, and I was like, I don't... Why? I mean, I guess... No. <laughs> okay. No, that... that I, I, well, I, was, I was mostly asking if you thought that the commenter was implying no, that they did it intentionally. I don't know. It okay. didn't seem well, like all it. Right. Just wondering. He's just like, they don't even know yet. Okay, okay. So he was more just saying that people are going to be pissed. <laughs> yeah, because it's not like they're like doing it specially to the Europeans. It's not like the Europeans hold like a big amount of the sales or something. Yep, yep. Any other good comments? Um, not really. I mean, most of them are pretty sad. A few people talking about getting a gun and not really sure what they're going to do with it. Dang. Because... Did did they say, you know, any estimates about how much it would have been total? Total money loss? Yeah. No. I mean, mean, no one... No, there's nothing official. Right. No, this is all a bunch of people figuring, like, just listing, like... I lost six Bitcoin. I lost nineteen. I lost eight hundred thousand dollars. Seriously? Yeah. Somebody had that much? Yeah. That is rough. I mean, other there's person who's put who had just apparently put fifty thousand in as an investment into their like I don't know how they were it sounded like they were a vendor, but I don't know why they had that much money in there. If they yeah, weren't that's a- if they weren't a a huge vendor that was getting all that. I'm like, why are you buying from other people and then reselling on the site? But I don't think unless, so I don't know. No, yeah, that's, that's what I would say is I definitely feel bad for you and this definitely sucks, but (laughs) you got to be careful putting that much money in one place. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I I don't know why they had it on there, but right. Yeah, some guy, he lost 2,000. That sounds more like a, a person who buys stuff, and then the next guy's like, he's an evolution staff member. He said, I lost 20,000. <laughs> <laughs> this person's saying, time of death, 3.17.908 Eastern Time. I don't know how he defined, like, how he knows that, but... Yeah, because cause when, when the original post was made four hours ago, the servers were still up. So, I don't know what he's referring to, but that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, another dude lo- lost almost 18 Bitcoin. And, like, I mean, there's some people on here who didn't really have anything in here. They're just like, why? Like, uh, I don't know. Out of, out of anything that happens in these, I, I don't, these scams always kind of, like, bother me more than other kinds of, of rob. Like, I don't really like, I, I mean, I look down pretty much because I, like, I don't really like people who steal anyway, but, <laughs> what 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 does that mean? I don't really like people who steal. <laughs> what? No, like like the whole, no, well, even like little th- things, like like um, I guess what started annoying me was when I was like like when I was like a teenager and like kids like starting to do it as like I stole a candy bar because I was cool. I'm like it's like a dollar. Oh, you know, <laughs> yeah, I hated that too. I hated that a whole lot. <laughs> I'm like, you stole candy. Okay, that's. Great man, awesome. Okay, <laughs> I mean, I've I've done it myself. It's hypocritical, but I don't. Something about scamming like these kind of things, where you're just like, I don't just like ripping the floor out from everybody, just letting them fall, just like taking like one second yeah. they have all this money, and then and then it's just all gone. 
I mean, it's yeah. not like it's just in these things. I mean, cool. I mean, this happens in America all the time. I don't, I'm not like this is in America, but this happens in le- legal stuff all the time. Uh, yeah, I think one of the tough things is though, like, basically, I just think this is the reason this is so much more impactful or or more painful for some people is because it's not like some abstract like money is disappearing or things are getting more expensive or loans are defaulting or it's not abstract like this it's literally a whole bunch of people had money and then they didn't it's just instant it's personal it's there and then it's not and it's just so much does that make sense to you it just seems so much more powerful that way and and worse i guess not really worse i don't see how it's worse because it's I mean, maybe not actually worse, but it feels worse because it's it's literally your money is there and then it's not. It has nothing to do with bank accounts or loans or prices or or the stock market. It's just money's there and then it's gone. I I mean, I'd probably prefer something like that because then I uh, can kind of understand it and be mad at no, One yeah, that, that that's part of the reason we love Bitcoin. It's because we don't have any of this weird banking manipulation and and yeah, and you take the risk and you have to deal with stuff like this. Yeah, so so I'm not you're you're right. I mean, it, this is probably the preferable situation, but it's still you, you feel the burn more probably. Uh, I I mean I yeah I can agree with that I guess because we in the other system it's more of a slow bleed versus. Yeah, it probably, yeah. yeah. I mean, because, like, I, I, I never, so. I've never experienced, like, a serious scam in the doll. Like, I've just had, like, the inflation and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, Which is very, I... you don't really think about it. So, yeah, you're right. You're listening to the You, Me, and BTC podcast. We need your help. First of all, we'd love it if you could check out our website, youmeandbtc.com. There you can find donation addresses for every single article and episode, and we'd love it if you could make use of those. We could also use some fans and followers, so if you're willing, please visit Facebook or Twitter.com slash youmeandbtc. Lastly, remember to subscribe to the show. You can do that on iTunes or sign up on our website to receive email updates. Thanks for your support. So I guess the other thing that we wanted to talk about today was a pretty interesting company that I found today. I mean, I guess they've been around for a year and a half, it says, so it's nothing super new and you know they've been they've been in the headlines here and there but i guess the main thing that that is new you know over the last few days is that they've announced that they've raised 116 million dollars uh it's a bitcoin company and that that 116 million in venture funding is more than any other company in the you know digital currency space has raised so far so that that's the main news is that this company it's called 21 inc has raised 116 million dollars so that that's cool that's exciting uh but it gets a little crazier than that so i'll i'll see what i can do to explain this this is a story from the wall street journal uh it it's i guess it's wsj.d uh, the D is for digits. It's like their tech blog, I guess. <laughs> it's by Michael J. Casey, and it's called Secretive Bitcoin Startup 21 Reveals Record Funds and Hints at Mass Consumer Play. So I, I, the main thing I want to talk about is secretive, because when I read this, I was I was kind of impressed. Apparently, nobody really knows what... Uh, what the company plans to do i mean not specifically there's a ton of speculation but it's just weird that that a company could be so foggy 
you know, and yet they still are able to raise so much money. And, and I guess it's promising. I, I, I'm really impressed, like I said, and it, it really kind of makes me bullish on Bitcoin to know that, you know, somebody has, somebody must have some really impressive plans if they're able to raise this much money. So I'm kind of excited to see where it goes, but I'll read a few paragraphs just to get some context. For the past year and a half, a Silicon Valley startup has quietly convinced some of the biggest names in venture capital to back its efforts to turn the technology behind Bitcoin into a mass marketed phenomenon. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip straight to the list of investors because it's pretty insane. 21's lead investors include U.S. venture capital heavyweights Andreessen Horowitz and RRE Ventures, along with Chinese private equity firm Yuan Capital, with a strategic stake going to chip maker Qualcomm, uh, Qualcomm Inc. That's actually one of my favorites, which I'll talk about in a minute, uh, through its venture capital unit. Additionally, Kosla Ventures and Data Collective have invested in 21, as well as chief executives and founders from various tech companies, including PayPal co-founders Peter Thiel and Max Levchin, eBay Inc. co-founder Jeff Skull, Dropbox Inc. CEO Drew Houston, Expedia Inc. CEO Dara Khosrowshahi, I hope that's close, uh, and Zynga Inc. co-founder Mark Pincus. So honestly, this list is kind of mind-blowing. I mean, holy crap, PayPal, eBay, Dropbox, Expedia, just to name a few. Dang, like, <laughs> I mean, they have to have some good ideas to get money from these people, right? I mean, are, are you guys... Does, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure Tim's going to say no, but I want to ask, <laughs> does this excite you guys as much as it does me? <laughs> I'm actually really excited. I mean, like, I saw some things in your article. I don't know if you got them from here, but I'll talk about what I've seen here already. One of the things is uh, they say the failure to gain mass adoption is partly because the public's attention has been misguidedly focused on Bitcoin's limited potential as a digital alternative to traditional currencies. In reality, they say its underlying technology has far, wire, far wider applications than that. Unlike the currency transactions that are generally associated with Bitcoin, new uses could range from lawyer-free smart contracts to tamper-proof online voting systems. So it's just like little things like that, I think, has made me more excited because it seems like, it seems like they actually have a good grasp of what makes it so awesome and that that's what they're actually trying to bring to people and something that it, i don't know if it says it in here but it was in your article it was talking about how their like privacy and and security is also like a big deal to them like their people have speculated that they're going to be making their own wallets and stuff right. so that oh, things yeah. can be really secure yeah i i did if anybody cares i wrote a, a piece for amagi metals for their blog and just kind of summarized a couple different articles on this, which is why I thought of, you know, bringing it up on the show. But yeah, that there were two main speculations, expectations, I don't know, two main things that people thought 21, this company might be working on. And most of this comes from the job listings on 21's website. They have, I don't know, eight or ten job openings there and with descriptions. So so that's that's pretty much the only information we have so far. And the first thing is pretty certain, and that's Bitcoin mining, because because the company is asking for like an ASIC designer. So yeah, they're they're pretty sure and, and like somebody to to manage like ten thousand servers on a daily basis. So they're pretty sure they're gonna get into some hardcore mining. So that's awesome. But then the second thing is pretty much what John brought up. They, they think they might be working on a hardware wallet and probably a, a corresponding software wallet. And this actually brings me back to Qualcomm, which, which I mentioned was one of my favorite investors, partly just because I love the company, 
they make the Snapdragon processors for Android phones, and I freaking love Snapdragons. They're pretty much the best processors there are right now. So it's a, it's, you know, they make really good chips, but what was speculated was that Qualcomm is going to team up with 21 to design some really cool features for Android phones and, and Bitcoin. Like John said, privacy and security. Hopefully somebody said they could come up with ways to keep your private keys offline even if they're on your phone or tablet that would be absolutely amazing because they would be right there right in your pocket all the time whenever you need them super easy to make transactions right from your phone and yet your private keys can stay offline and it could be you know theoretically it could be built straight into the system chip so yeah that that's Wait, that's where one of my is the favorite. private key it's on your phone, but it stays offline, just like a, a hardware wallet. Then how, you know, can, then how can you spend it? It's just like a hardware wallet. When I plug a hardware wallet into my computer, the private keys are never accessible. I just send it messages. It gets signed on the device, not on my computer, on the wallet. The, you know, the transaction gets signed with the private key, and then the signed transaction gets sent back to my computer. I never see the private key. Only the hardware does. Only the, the hardware wallet does. Okay. And, and theoretically, pretty much, they could build hardware wallets into a phone. So, okay, but how would, how would you... Uh, like, you're saying you have to put the, the USB stick in? Is that what you said before? Well, or... I mean, with the, the way hardware wallets are now, yes. The, I mean, most, most hardware wallets are USB, yeah. So, like, but you'd have to have some way of disengaging it, wouldn't, wouldn't you? So that it's not, like, not disengaged. I'm not using the right term. Um, cause do you get kind of what I'm saying? Cause you have to plug the USB in. How, how do you keep the hardware wallet separate and then use it? Like, what engages because inside I, the I, phone? You send, okay, so, so one of the comparisons they brought up was called Apple's Secure Element, which I don't know a ton of details about this, so it's possible that I'm about to make up some things, but it still, it still is pretty much what I'm trying to say. I think what Apple's Secure Element is, is it's a part of the, I don't know if it's a part of the processor or if it's like its own piece of, if it's like its own chip inside the, inside the phone. Uh, and I think this is related to Apple Pay, but you can store information on this secure element that pretty much just like a hardware wallet, where you can communicate with it, you can send messages to and from it, but you can't actually read the data that's on it. Does that make sense? So, so just like a hardware guess, wallet. I guess, but how, I mean, that's, I don't know. I, it just seems to me like that's just another thing that's not going to take that long for someone to learn how to hack into. Well, okay, that's that's a really good point, and I thought about that a whole lot. So that's that's always a possibility, but but theoretically, that shouldn't be possible because it should be completely inaccessible from the but outside. It can't be world. completely inaccessible if it's receiving messages constantly, or if it's capable of receiving messages constantly. You send, yeah, you send it messages. And it sends messages back, but it, it never sends the private keys back. Yeah, it just but that sends still allows transactions back. I, I mean, yeah. I, I, no, I, I agree. I, I don't mean, understand computers. Anything can be so, hacked. Okay. It's just, okay. Yeah. It's just, you know, this should be really secure. So, and Let's and, just say it's a heck of a lot better than keeping yeah. everything on an online wallet on your smartphone. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. thinking about just putting it all on my ceiling and just walking around with it in my phone until I break <laughs> it again. <laughs> Oh, another thing from... Are, are we done with that part of it? Yeah, Did yeah, you, you're good. Another thing that was in, in your article was... Uh, they were talking about how they wanted... Or people were, I guess, are speculating that they're... Something about what they're doing. They they might want to try to figure out a way to make transaction... Or, yeah, confirmation times really fast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Instead of the 10 minutes that it is now. And I think... One of the most interesting things about that is they were saying if they could figure out a way to do that, 
and have people pay them to process their transactions really fast they would actually give up regular mining rewards which right. that kind of reminded me of i think we actually did a whole episode about this about mining rewards having and stuff and into the future when there's eventually going to be no more rewards and like how that's going to work out so and i think we actually talked about something like this where you're just basically paying a company to process your transactions right and the, the tough thing is though and, and i i will have to see how this would play out i have a, a few qualms about this because mostly their their system their proposed it, it's not even 21's proposed system it's what people think 21 might do and i agree that faster transaction times would be absolutely amazing and i also agree that you know sometimes there are trustworthy companies and people out there but the problem is i'm pretty sure their system is or or that sort of system would pretty much be based on trust they hope to be a big enough company and and a trustworthy enough company where they have enough mining power and enough nodes such that they are able to personally verify transactions not on the whole network but by themselves they can take a transaction they can say yes this is a valid transaction and we're definitely going to mine it we're definitely going to put it in the blockchain so we're going to verify it for you even before it's officially in the blockchain because we're, we just we're powerful enough that we can promise that it'll be confirmed and you know, yeah, like I said, it's great to have faster times. The problem is that's that's still a trust-based system. And if you trust them, that's great. I mean, I'm sure it'll be helpful for a ton of people. It's just it's just not perfect, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't I wasn't like I don't know if it sounded like this, but I wasn't saying that it sounds like the the a perfect system. I was more just saying it's an interesting right thing oh, because yeah. it's not something you hear people talking about a lot. Like yeah, I haven't, definitely. I haven't heard of any other people proposing ideas for doing that. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe you have, but no, I, I, I agree. I may or may not have heard it before, but I totally agree that it, it's a, it would be a fantastic feature. Somebody, somebody mentioned just how, you know, if, if I want to go to Best Buy and buy a thousand dollar computer, they're probably not going to let me walk out without waiting for a confirmation and that would just be weird to sit there for 10 minutes to wait on a... Have you ever gone to the pharmacy? Have I ever gone to the pharmacy? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a little different. But, but yeah, yeah the, so, with something like Best Buy, though... Put pills in a bottle. With something... Well, they actually make the pills. But anyways, yeah, like, some, I guess, like, this could be really useful for things like that like you're saying just going to best buy or something i mean if you're doing huge bank transfers of like hundreds of thousands of dollars you can stand to wait 10 minutes if it's going to be a more reliable oh, yeah. transaction yeah, yeah. but like if you're going if you're like even better than best buy like if you go through the drive through at mcdonald's or something like well i'm that... willing to put my trust in a company to buy to get like a two dollar hamburger yeah but they are most companies already let you get away with that yeah that if if it's small enough yeah most companies will will do zero confirmations for 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 a cup of coffee or whatever yeah but that only most there is the point that most of these places aren't selling in that kind of high of volume too. yeah that's true yeah although but i don't think that many people are going to try to double spend yeah i mean i think though like Something like that might make people more willing to start accepting Bitcoin. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And uh, and I think it would just make people feel better about it, the whole thing, the whole situation. Right. One thing that will be really interesting is, is to see, you know, what kind of fees w would be in a system like that. Because one of the reasons we praise bitcoin a lot is because credit cards are freaking expensive you know credit card fees and hopefully this sort of system wouldn't turn into a similar credit card situation where we have a ton of mining power 
we are really good at processing transactions. We can verify them quickly. So pay us 3% on everything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing about that is that I don't see how they could ever make it a mandatory thing. It, it would seem that it would be more of an opt-in thing. Well, from yeah. Yeah. Credit cards are opt-in too, but everybody opts in because... Well, it's not the same thing because using a credit card isn't exactly the same thing as using cash. But using Bitcoin is the same whether you have them process your transaction or not. Okay. Yeah, okay. So No, but it's what do you mean it's the same? It's different though. It's one is getting in No, the it's the same exact code. It's the same protocols. It's just their nodes are the ones that are processing it but first. How, how does that make it less opt-in than or more opt-in than a credit card it doesn't make it more or less opt-in what i'm saying is that a credit card is different than cash and having a different person process your transaction doesn't change anything about bitcoin what i was saying about the opting in is that i, I think this will make it a little bit clearer there's more incentive to opt into a credit card than something like this because even though it's it's going to be a lot faster than 10 minutes it's still doing the, like it's still the same process that the payment is going through but with a credit card it's like a completely different process than using cash like you just swipe it there's no change or anything like that and you don't have to carry all this stuff around like there's a lot more incentive so they're both opt in but this there's only one one real reason to use this service versus a, using a credit card versus cash. There's a lot more reasons to use or it's, it's a lot. Yeah. The opt-in has more incentives. Yeah. Especially, especially with uh, points that I hate it so much, but I still use my credit card because I get points and it's like, why wouldn't I? But I, I realize it's kind of like a, a trap. It's like they, they recycle money from the merchant to the, customer just so that people keep using credit cards i don't know i, I don't i don't want to get into it too much well but. yeah it it makes you spend more money right right that's exactly. like a, people always spend more money with credit cards even if they always pay their bills and they well, have great credits rating and whatever people almost always spend more money with credit cards. right I, I i've heard of studies like that and stuff and it's probably true but even without that it's just it's not about spending more money it's about using a credit card instead of cash if you're getting you know one percent back well then yeah sure i'll use my credit card well the thing is i Does mean that really save you that much compared to using cash like, have you done the, the math on that? Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's money back. How how could I lose? Because you're, just because the extra charge, I don't, because it's 1% back plus the charges. Well, no, for, yeah, but I'm going to pay those, uh, that 3% is what yeah, the merchant pays. Yeah, it goes pays. to the merchant, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's, and, so that's, that's why it matters that you spend more. Because if you use cash, they're still getting paid by the merchants. But if you're spending more... You see what I'm saying? No, no. If if you use cash, the credit cards don't get anything. They only get paid when you use the credit card. Because it would have to be trans. Yeah, uh, that would make sense, wouldn't it? So, so the merchant wants you to use cash because the price is the same, cash or credit, usually. Not yeah, always. they just get charged more. So yeah, so if the merchant can get you to use cash, then they don't have to pay the fees, and they get to keep all your money. If you pay it with a credit card, then the merchant has to pay a fee. Yeah, but isn't haven't we talked about before how that's usually factored into prices of things? Right. Like yeah. things are more expensive. Exactly. So it's still it's still like yeah. And actually, I mean, this is getting a little abstract and maybe my thoughts aren't perfect, but one thing that is pretty cool is when you think about it, a credit card most of the time, especially if it's an actual credit card as opposed to like a a debit card or like a Visa debit card or whatever if it's an actual credit card it's a really similar idea where the where the transaction gets verified quickly on a trusted basis but the actual payment could easily you know even if you even if you never are late even if you never pay late you could still wait a month or so before actually paying money whereas with this bitcoin stuff they verify it quickly and on a trusted basis, but it's still going to go through within 10 or 20 minutes. 
not several days like a credit card like a credit card payment do you know what i mean yeah so it's similar maybe to a credit thing where it's you know trusted but at least at least within the trusted system everything still moves a whole lot faster hopefully I mean, we haven't yeah. really seen it work yet hopefully and that's actually that might be a good way to close is because i thought about that a lot too I, we hope that all this will happen, and I'm absolutely impressed that they were able to raise this much money, and I am still bullish, like I said, but you never know. No matter how much money they get, they could fall apart. They could be a joke. I mean, I don't mean an actual joke. They could just fail. <laughs> so, yeah, we definitely hope all this turns out amazing, but it's still pretty fuzzy, and we'll have to see, so... Thanks for listening to episode 64. All of the music in today's show was from John Stewart. Remember to check out this week's show notes at youmeandbtc.com and leave us a comment. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the Evolution Collapse or 21 Inc. We'll see you next Thursday.